This is your host Danny and this is Grammar from English Plus podcast. Today's episode is the first grammar episode from season 3 and I told you before that things are going to change and only for the better. We're going to start a grammar course. So if you start with this episode and continue all the way to the end of this grammar series or grammar course, you will have a comprehensive grammar course at your fingertips. And to make this even better, I am adding more stuff to the website. The link is in the description. It will take you to the custom post for this episode where we will have extra exercises and extra explanation, audio explanation for the exercises. So on the website, it's going to be a comp- completely different experience i really encourage you to take the link go there for two main reasons first of all you are going to listen to the audio in chunks so you're going to listen to some explanation then i'm going to ask you to do something then you're going to listen to some explanation of what you've done which cements the information you learn and the second reason is that this post i'm going to create for this episode is going to stay only one week publicly free and after that i'm going to lock this post and make it available only to patrons so you have the opportunity to make the best but this has to be timely as i told you again the post is going to be publicly available for only one week before i lock it and make it only available for patrons and talking about patrons once again i would like to thank omar moya and ismail gaitan polanco for their great contribution and their becoming a patron i really appreciate your support because that is the only way we can continue follow the lead of omar and ismail and become patrons of english plus podcast as you can see one of the things you get is some of the locked content it will always be available for my patrons but that aside you will be doing our learning community a great service with your contribution because that's the only way you can keep this alive you can keep our learning community alive and now without further ado let's start talking about our grammar episode today we're going to start talking about present and past simple and progressive this is going to take two or three episodes today we're going to focus on the present next time on the past and maybe i will dedicate a third episode for more practice and more exercises to cement the information that you get from these episodes but as i told you it's going to be a course like and don't worry everything you need is on the website the link is in the description and now let's get cracking start with a little exercise i'm going to give you 10 sentences and you're going to decide whether these sentences are correct or incorrect and if they are incorrect you will have to try to make them correct now the purpose of this exercise at the beginning of our big chapter present and past simple and progressive is for you to know how much you know about the topic we're going to talk about and also even if you don't know anything about the topic i will give you some heads up about what we are going to learn in this chapter So, let me start with the 10 sentences. I'm going to read the sentences, but as I told you earlier, if you are listening on the podcast, you can take the link, go to the website, you will find these 10 sentences with the audio that you're listening to here, and you will have all the time in the world to give me your answers. But now if you're just listening to the podcast, make sure you write these sentences or if you can remember them, tell me if these sentences are correct, incorrect, and if they are incorrect, remember, you will have to try to make them correct. So let me start with the first one. Air is consisting of oxygen, nitrogen and other gases. The second sentence. I am working overtime this week. 3. Does the copy machine working right now? 4. We aren't knowing Sammy's wife. 5. My cell phone network is always dropping calls. 6. Gloria canceled her doctor's appointment because she felt better. 7. I turned on the stove, am boiling the water and forget to put in the rice. 8. A few children drawed some pictures this morning while the teacher was talking. 9. When I turned the key, the car wasn't starting. And finally 10. I was going to call you but my phone died. So, what do you think? 
Take some time, think about these sentences, you can play them again, or if you are on the website, you can see them right in front of you and try to figure out whether these sentences are correct, incorrect, and if they're incorrect, try to make them correct. And I will see you back in a little bit to talk about each of these sentences and see what we're going to learn so that we never make these mistakes again. Well, let me start with the first sentence. The first one is incorrect. We said air is consisting of oxygen, nitrogen, and other gases. Well, here I'm not talking about something that is happening at the moment of speaking. It's a fact. It's a scientific fact. When we talk about scientific facts, we don't use the present continuous. We use the present simple. We say air consists of oxygen, nitrogen, and other gases. The second sentence, I am working overtime this week. Well, there's nothing wrong about this sentence. Everything is okay, so it is correct. The third one, does the copy machine working right now? Well, there's a technical problem here. We either say, does the copy machine work in general? Or we say, is the copy machine? Especially we said right now. So I'm asking about something that is happening at the moment. I want to know if it is working now or not. But the problem is that I use does instead of is. I should say, is the copy machine working right now? So this is incorrect and this is how we correct it. The fourth sentence, we aren't knowing Sammy's wife. Well, it is incorrect. The problem about this sentence is that the verb itself, no. No is known as a stative verb. Now, generally, when we use stative verbs, we don't use them in the continuous or in the progressive. We use them in simple forms, whether it's present, past, and later on we will learn about present perfect and other tenses. But for now, this is present continuous, and no is a stative verb. So we should use it in present simple. Because there's no action here, it's just a state. We don't say we aren't knowing Sammy's wife, we say we don't know Sammy's wife. And what about the next one? Five, my cell phone network is always dropping calls. Well, since it does that all the time, always, we don't usually use the present continuous to talk about something that happens all the time. Well, later on, you will see that we can use always with present continuous, but this is not the case. Here, I'm just talking about something that happens often, happens a lot of the time, as a regular thing that happens, that is present simple. So, instead of saying that, we should say my cell phone network always drops calls. Or even better, we can say my cell phone network is often slow. That's even a better way to say what I wanted to say here. But if you want to stick to this sentence, you can say my cell phone network always drops calls. And now for the next one. Gloria canceled her doctor's appointment because she felt better. What do you think about that? Well, it's perfect. It's great. Nothing is wrong with that. So let's move to number seven. I turned on the stove and boiling the water and forget to put in the rice. Well, there's a problem about using the past and the present within the same sentence. Sometimes we can do that and we will get to that later. It's not, I'm not saying it's advanced, but it's very specific. But here, there's no reason to use the present with the past. I'm just telling you about what happened. It's all in the past. So I should say I turned on the stove, boiled the water and forgot to put in the rice. So number seven is incorrect and that's how we correct it. Now number eight, a few children drawed some pictures this morning while the teacher was talking. Well, the sentence is in the past and everything is okay, no problem about past simple and past continuous, except that draw is an irregular verb. So we cannot say a few children drawed ed, it's drew, d-r-e-w drew some pictures this morning while the teacher was talking. So that is also incorrect. What about number nine? When I turned the key, the car wasn't starting. Actually, I turned the key so that the car could start. So it doesn't make sense. The car wasn't starting, of course. And start is an action that happens at a moment. So it doesn't make any sense to use it in progressive. What we should say here, when I turned the key, the car didn't start. And for the last sentence, I was going to call you, but my battery or my phone died. Now, this one is perfectly fine. Nothing is wrong with the last one. So here you have an idea about the things that we're going to learn. We're going to learn about all these things or all these mistakes that I mentioned with these first 10 sentences within the course of the first chapter, which, as I told you, will take 
about two to three episodes. And by the way, within the course of our podcasts, I'm not going to give you a lot of exercises because that will make the podcast very long. But all these exercises with the explanation similar to what we just did is going to be available on my website, EnglishPlusPodcast.com. The link in the description will take you right to the post. And don't forget, this post is going to be publicly available only for one week. So hurry up, go there before it is locked and it is available only to my patrons. So now let's move on and talk about the simple present and present continuous. What are they? When can we use them? And I will give you some examples so that you understand the meaning of the present simple and the present continuous. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Looking to enhance your English skills while exploring a world of knowledge? then English Plus Podcast website is just for you. Dive into diverse topics ranging from science to literature, history to business, and myths to modern insights. Each episode from our podcast or article from our magazine is a journey of learning and discovery, designed to not only improve your language skills, but also broaden your understanding of the world. Join us at English Plus Podcast where language meets limitless learning. Tune in today and take your English to the next level. Visit EnglishPlusPodcast.com to start your journey. English Plus Podcast, language, learning, enlightenment. Never stop learning with English Plus. Now let me start with a couple of examples. Now if I say water consists of hydrogen and oxygen, or if I say the average person breathes 21,600 times a day, or the world is round, what is in common between all these three examples? Well, we're talking about something Water consists of hydrogen and oxygen. The average person breathes 21,600 times a day and the world is round. We're talking about something that is true in the past, is true in the present, and will be true in the future. I'm talking about a general statement of fact and general truths. That is the present simple. When you talk about something that is not going to change because that's what it is, that is the nature of this thing. Water consists of hydrogen and oxygen not only today, every day, all the time. The world is round. Well, it's not only round today and tomorrow it will be rectangular or in some other shape. No, it is round yesterday, today, tomorrow, in the future. Maybe in the far future it will change. I don't know. But it is a general fact that the world is round. But is that everything about the simple present? Not at all. Let me give you a couple more examples and we will talk about another major meaning where we use the simple present. I get up at 7 every morning. I always eat a salad for lunch. So here, I'm not talking about general statements about facts or general truths. Getting up 7 in the morning, that is not a scientific fact. Or always eating a salad for lunch, I always eat a salad for lunch. That's not a scientific fact. But it is still simple present because in these two examples, we use the present simple to express habitual or everyday activities. So they are similar to the first three examples I gave you in one thing. They're not going to change. This is the way it goes. Well, it's not a scientific fact. It's not as strong as like water consists of hydrogen and oxygen. Not at all. But here I get up at 7 every morning. That means yesterday I got up at 7 o'clock. Today I got up at 7 o'clock. Tomorrow I will get up at 7 o'clock every morning. So there is something permanent about the present simple that we use, whether it's a scientific fact or we just use it to talk about habitual or everyday activities. But usually we use it to talk about things that don't change or at least don't change easily. All right. So this is our present simple. What about the present progressive? Let me give you a couple of examples that we can understand it even better. The students are sitting at their desks right now. I need an umbrella because it is raining. 
I am taking five courses this semester. Here, what is different about this? Why didn't we say the students sit at their desks right now? Or I need an umbrella because it rains. Or I take five courses this semester. The thing is that we have two main ideas we have to understand when we talk about the present progressive. First thing is that we use the present progressive to express an activity that is in progress at the moment of speaking, just like the first example. The students are sitting at their desks. Guess when? Right now. It is happening. It is in progress at the moment of speaking right now. And the same goes for the second example. Well, if you say, I need an umbrella because it rains, that means not because it's raining right now outside. No, because it rains in general and I need an umbrella like I need to go buy an umbrella. That's a general thing. You can use the present simple here. But this example is a different story. You look outside the window. You want to go out or something. You look outside the window and you can see that it is raining at the moment right now. So you need an umbrella right now because I want to go out and I don't want to be all wet. I need an umbrella because it is raining at the moment. And there is another very important point that you need to understand about the present continuous or the present progressive that it is a temporary activity. Whenever we talk about continuous, we're usually talking about a temporary thing. The simple is more permanent. The continuous is more temporary. The present progressive is a temporary activity that began in the past, is continuing at present, and will probably end at some point in the future. So it is not going to last forever. That is why we use the continuous. The continuous reinforces the idea that this is temporary. I'll give you two more examples to understand what we mean by permanent and temporary. What if I tell you that I live in Los Angeles? What does that mean? What does that tell you? Because remember, I say that over and over. Grammar is for you to have extra tools to use for what you want to mean or what you want to say, right? It is not about just understand so that we can do some exercises. The exercises are just there to help you. But the exercises are not real English. The real English is whatever you want to say to people, right? So if I tell you that I live in Los Angeles, what does that tell you? Does that tell you that I'm here at the moment because I have some job or whatever, just on a temporary basis, and later on I will move somewhere else? No, because I use the present simple. Because I use the present simple, you understand from what I said, I live in Los Angeles, that this is a permanent situation. At least that's what I think. Well, something might come up and I might move. I don't know. But when I say that, that means I'm here on a permanent basis. I'm not thinking of leaving. But what if I tell you I'm living in Los Angeles? Even without saying at the moment, without giving any more explanations, what do you get only from my using the present progressive to tell you that I'm living in Los Angeles instead of I live in Los Angeles? You understand that this is a temporary thing. This is something that is happening at the moment, yes, but it is not going to happen forever because you know that I have plans to change or I need to change or I have to move somewhere else. It doesn't matter. But you know from just my using the present progressive that this situation is temporary. So that is what you need to understand at the very basic level of understanding simple present and present progressive. And remember, this is not everything. Of course, there is a lot more that we will talk about, but I will try not to make things too complicated. I will try to take it step by step. And maybe later on, we will go on to talk about some advanced uses of the simple present and the present progressive. But after all, it's not just about learning grammar, right? We want to learn the grammar we need, the tools we need so that we can speak better and write better. Okay, so that is about the simple present and the present progressive and the difference between them. Now, in this exercise, I want you to differentiate between the present simple and the present progressive. So I want you to complete the sentences, use the simple present or the present progressive of the verbs in parentheses. But the more important thing is not just getting the answers or getting the right answers. Of course, that's very important. That's good for you. You should be proud of yourselves if you get all the answers correctly. But this is not the only point. I want you to think and know why you are using the present simple or the present progressive. I want you to make a conscious decision. 
You know why you use the present simple here. You know why you use the present continuous here. Because after all, it's just a 50-50 deal, right? It's either the present simple or the present progressive. So, as I told you, pick the right tense, but try to know exactly why you're picking this tense. That will help make your understanding of the tenses even better. All right, get to it, and good luck. I will see you after you finish. Okay, so I hope you got all the answers correctly, but if you didn't, no problem. That's why you're here, that we're here to learn, right? And I'm here to help you. So let's start with number one. Kristen is in the shower. She wash her hair. And Kristen wash her hair every other day or so. So in the first one, we should say she is washing her hair because I'm talking about what Kristen is doing at the moment. You come and ask me, where is Kristen? I tell you, Kristen is in the shower. She is washing her hair. But the second one is not the same way. I'm telling you about every other day or so. So it's a habit. I'm telling you about Kristen's habit when it comes to washing her hair. So we don't use the present continuous here. We use Kristen washes her hair every other day or so. We use the present simple. Now, number two, Tony usually sits in the front row during class. Not right now, not at the moment. Maybe he is sitting at the moment in the front row, but that's not what I'm talking about. That's not what I'm trying to tell you. I'm not trying to tell you what Tony is doing at the moment of speaking. I am trying to tell you what Tony usually does, a habit in general. So Tony usually sits, present simple. But the second one, today, he is sitting in the last row. Now, we know from the first example that Tony usually sits in the front row. But today is an exception. Today is just happening on a temporary basis, not permanent. Today, he is sitting in the last row. So you see, that's present progressive because it is temporary. It is not the usual case. Number three, Lars works the night shift on weekends. Well, the key thing here is I said weekends. So it's not just this weekend. If I just talk about this weekend, maybe we should use the present progressive because I'm just telling you what's happening this weekend. But no, because I said on weekends. So I'm talking about something that happens every weekend. That's present simple. Lars works the night shift on weekends. The second one, he's not home now. See, here the time changes and the focus changes. I'm talking about right now. He's not home right now. He is working a double shift. And by just using the present continuous here, I'm trying to tell you that this is a temporary thing. Maybe, maybe usually he is at home at this time of day or on this day. But not right now. He's not home now. He's working a double shift. Number four, after six days of rain, I'm glad that the sun is shining. I'm talking about a specific thing, a specific time. Six days of rain, no sun, or at least no sun shining. But today I'm glad that the sun is shining. I'm not talking about the sun shines in general, no. I'm talking about a specific moment right now. Look outside the window, look at the sun. It is shining, it is beautiful. It is specific, it is not in general. But the second one, every morning the sun shines in my bedroom window and wakes me up. So here, the sun shines in my bedroom window and wakes me up. Not right now. It's not a temporary thing. Every morning. I'm talking about something that happens over and over. That's present simple. Number five. Babies grow very quickly. That's a fact. Newborn babies are very different from three-month-olds. That is a fact. We're talking about facts here. That babies grow very quickly. It is not some temporary thing. It's not a specific wonder baby or something. No, babies grow very quickly. But your baby is growing so fast. She isn't a newborn anymore. Here I'm talking about a specific person, a specific case. Your baby is growing so fast. I'm not talking about your baby and the growth rate of your baby in general. I'm talking about what I'm seeing in front of my eyes. I see your baby. It's growing fast. So that is present continuous. And finally, number six, please be quiet. Now, from the get-go, you understand that it is something specific right now. Now, please be quiet like forever. No, right now, I'm trying to concentrate on my math homework. I am trying. I am doing it right now. That's why I want you to be quiet. I don't want you to be quiet forever. No, after I finish my math homework, I want to talk to you. I want you to talk. Please don't stop talking. But right now, please be quiet. I am trying to concentrate on my math homework. 
But the second one, each day, our math teacher, each day. I'm talking about something that happens each day. So that is present simple, right? Our math teacher tries to explain the material clearly, but I am very confused. So I hope you understand it even better. And even if you made mistakes, don't worry about that. You can come later to this exercise and you can practice it later because this exercise is going to be there. You can practice it as many times as you want. But my advice, don't do it right away because I've just talked about it. Do it tomorrow so that you try to remember the explanations I just talked about. And now let's talk about the form of the present simple and the present progressive, the affirmative, negative, and question forms. So let's start with the present progressive because it's a lot easier. Why is it easier? Because the main verb is always the same. That's why it's easier. The main verb, we talk about the verb that has a meaning. When I say I am helping, what's the meaning of am? Nothing. It is just here to help. But the real meaning of the sentence is within the verb help. That's the main verb. And why is it easier to form the present progressive? Because the main verb always comes in ing form. In progressive. Remember, I'm talking about progressive here. Whether you're talking about affirmative, negative, or questions, it's the same. The thing that changes is just verb to be. Because something else for the progressive, if you want to make any progressive, we will see it later down the road when we talk about the past continuous, when we talk about the present perfect progressive, when we talk about the future progressive, or even the past perfect progressive, any progressive, or any continuous. You can see that I use progressive and continuous because they're the same thing, but it doesn't matter. So whatever continuous tense you use, the main verb is going to be ing form, and you will need a form of verb to be. And here, verb to be changes, of course. But here, since we're talking about present progressive, so we have only three options. We have am, is, or are. Now, obviously, we use am with I. We use I with you, we, and they. And we use is with he, she, it. And it's just like talking about verb to be on its own, right? When we want to make it negative, we simply add not. I am not helping. You are not helping. Or she is not helping. I just add not, and that's it. Of course, we can use it in short form. We can say, you aren't helping. You aren't, A-R-E-N apostrophe T. Or we can say, he isn't helping, I-S-N apostrophe T. That is also possible, but be careful. We don't have amn't, right? We don't say A-M-N apostrophe T. That doesn't exist. Am not, always am not. We cannot contract am not. It has to be in full form all the time. And now, the big question. When we want to make questions, what do we do? Well, we simply put verb to be first or before the subject. I am helping. Okay, put verb to be first. Am I helping? I'm asking the question here. Or are you helping? Is he helping? And even when you put a question word like when or where or whatever, you use the same form. When are you helping? When is she helping? When are they helping? Where, etc. Whatever you want to use. It doesn't change. We just put the question word first, but the same form applies to all kinds of questions. All right? So that is the present progressive, which is easy, as I told you. Easy because the main verb never changes, and we just need to use verb to be correctly. Put not in negative. Put verb to be before the subject to make questions, and that's all. But with a simple present, it's a little bit more difficult. It is not so difficult, but it is a little bit more difficult because the main verb changes. It is not always the same, and we do not use a helping verb in every single form. Now, for example, for negative and questions, we have to use a helping verb, which is verb to do. But for affirmative, we don't have to. We can use it without verb to do as a helping verb. And actually, almost always, we use it without do. We just use the main verb. So if you want to use the main verb on its own, no helping verb, that is an affirmative course, well, that means that the verb is not going to stay the same. The verb is going to change. And the change is very simple, but is very confusing and causes a lot of common mistakes. But you have to remember that because that's one of the most common mistakes in English, actually, which is adding S to he, she, and it. We say, I help, you, we, and they help, but he, she, it helps. So that is for affirmative. But as I told you, for negative and questions, we use verb to do as a helping verb. But again, because we have this extra S with he, she, it, that means we use do and we use does. The same verb, but a different conjugation. So we say I do, obviously negative. So we say I do not or I don't help. You, we, and they 
don't help he, she, and it, not don't, doesn't, does not help. If I want to make questions, it's the same thing. I put verb to do at the beginning before the subject. That's what I mean, because sometimes there is a question word and it's not exactly at the beginning of the question. But you understand what I mean by now. So do I help? Do you? Do we? Do they help? But he, she, it, not do, it's does. Does he or does she or does it help? And as I told you, the same way goes when I want to use something like when, where, these are question words, of course. When I want to use them, I don't change the form I use to make questions. It's the same. I just put when or where or whatever you want to use first. And then you continue with the regular way to create questions. When do I help? When does he help? When does she help? Etc. So that is about the simple present and present progressive affirmative, negative and question forms. I know that I don't usually talk about forms that much, but I got some requests from you to talk about the form a little bit more because not everybody is so fluent in forming tenses. And don't worry, I heard you and I am including that in our grammar lessons. And now let's do some exercises. And now let's talk about verbs that are not usually used in the progressive And here we're talking about stative verbs. So what are stative verbs? How are they different from other verbs? Or what we call sometimes progressive verbs or action verbs. Well, when we talk about stative verbs, we're talking about verbs that describe a state. There's nothing going on. You can't see any action. Like, for example, no. The verb no, it's a state. Think about it. What is the action in knowing? Well, there's no action. You either know or you don't know. You either believe or you don't believe. Doubt or you don't doubt. So there is no action. There is nothing going on. There's nothing in progress. So because of that, the nature of these verbs doesn't allow them to be used in the present progressive. And they are usually used in simple forms. I said usually because now we will see that sometimes, yes, we use them in progressive forms, especially for some verbs that have two meanings. They can have a state of meaning and they can have an action meaning. But let me tell you about some of these verbs. We have, as I told you, know, believe, doubt, recognize, remember. You either remember or you don't. Suppose, understand, like, appreciate, care about, please. Uh, please here, I'm not saying please do this, please do that. Please like to please someone, to prefer, dislike, fear, hate, mind, belong, possess, own. You're talking about something that belongs to you or you own something, you have something. It's either you have it or you don't. There's no action about that. I cannot be owning something. There's no process. There's no progress here. So you use it in simple or other verbs like desire, need, want, wish. Imagine you need something. What, you are needing it right now? What does that mean? You either need it or you don't. But when we talk about something else like swimming or walking, yeah, that can be happening over time. But for need, yes, it can happen for a very long time, but it's not an action. That's why it's a state of verb. We usually use it in present simple, not continuous. Other verbs like consist of, contain, exist, matter, hear, sound, seem, look like, resemble, agree and disagree, mean, promise, amaze and surprise. These are all stative verbs. What does that mean? Why do we care about that? Yeah, of course we do care about this because these verbs are not usually used in present continuous or in any continuous form for that matter. Because you will see that these verbs are not usually used in any other continuous tense. We don't usually use them in past continuous or future continuous or present perfect continuous. We don't usually use them in any progressive tense or any continuous tense. But that being said, of course, some of you now are thinking to themselves. And here, I just use thinking. You just told us that think is a state of verb. So why are you using it in progressive? Well, because when I say I'm thinking about something, that is an action. If I say I think your cousin is very nice, that is my opinion. So it's a state. I think your cousin is very nice. I don't think your cousin is very nice. That's either I think or I don't think. It's an opinion. It's a state of mind. But when I say I'm thinking about my trip to Rome, I'm actually doing something. I'm listing some ideas. I'm uh, calculating some expenses, etc. I'm thinking. That is an action. So think can have two meanings. 
both progressive and non-progressive. So you have to be flexible a little bit. It's not just if I say that here is a list of verbs, don't use them in progressive so that you never use them in progressive. Not at all. You will have to be careful that sometimes the meaning is different. And because the meaning is different, there is an action and therefore we can use them in progressive or in continuous. Let me give you some examples about common verbs with both non-progressive and progressive meanings. Just like think, just like this example I just told you about. Let's talk about look. It looks cold outside. It looks cold. You see the trees, you see everybody's wearing heavy coats, etc. It looks cold outside. Now, looks here is non-progressive. But what if Olga is looking out of the window? Well, she's doing something. She's, she's doing an action. She is looking out of the window. I'm not saying about she looks nice or she looks beautiful. That's a different story. No, I'm not talking about her looks. I'm not describing her. I am telling you what she is doing, what action she is doing at the moment. So look here can have a progressive meaning. Olga is looking out of the window. What about appear? Jack appears to be tired today. I mean, look at him. The state of Jack is tired. He's tired. It's just like saying that Jack is tired. But if I say she's appearing on a TV show today, She's appearing. Here, I'm not talking about the appearance. I'm not talking about a state. She's going to show. She's going to that TV show and we're going to see her on TV. That is an action. Think, just like the example I gave you. I think that Mr. Liu is a good teacher or I'm thinking about my family right now. The first one was a state of verb. The second one was an action. And you can say the same thing about feel. I feel that Mr. Liu is a good teacher or I'm feeling a little tired today. It's an action. It is progressing. I'm feeling a little tired. It's not in general. It is an action. What about have? When it comes to have, you can say have is always stative, right? No. When it has the meaning of possession or ownership, yes, of course, it is stative. Like I have a bike. But what if you want to say I'm having a good time? Can't you say that? I'm having lunch. Well, I'm eating. Have has a lot of other meanings, like spending time, like eating. When it comes in the meaning of an action, yes, of course, you can use it in progressive. And remember, here I'm not saying that you always use it in progressive, based on the meaning, of course. But sometimes even an action verb, we use it in a present simple because the meaning of the sentence, what we want to say, we want to talk about a general thing, so it is present simple. Please don't make this mistake of using these verbs in simple present and using every other verb in progressive. Not at all. We're just using if the meaning is progressive, we use ing, of course, or the present progressive, but not with all verbs. You have to put that in mind. Let me give you some more examples because that's necessary. That's necessary for you to understand how grammar is flexible. C. Let's talk about C. Do you see that bird? Well, you either see it or you don't see it. There's no action. There is nothing in progress. But if I say the doctor is seeing a patient right now, like examining the patient, that is an action. What about taste? The soup tastes salty. I'm describing the taste of the soup. And here it's a state. It's not an action. But when I say the chef is tasting the soup, he's actually taking a spoon, putting the spoon in whatever, the bowl or the pan, and tasting the soup. That is an action. Smell is the same. Something smells bad. What is it? Or Anne is smelling the perfume to see if she wants to buy it. That is an action. Or even love can be used in ING or in progressive. Well, maybe McDonald's used that a lot, like when they started their famous slogan, I'm loving it. But you can also use it for other meanings. Ken is enjoying parenthood. In fact, he's loving it. It's like an action here. Well, usually we don't use it in progressive, but it can be used in progressive. What about verb to be itself? A verb to be itself, you might say, this is a state. Verb to be is about state, right? Mary is old and wise. Absolutely. We don't say is being. It doesn't make any sense, right? But sometimes we do. And it has a very specific meaning. For example, we say Al is sick but won't see a doctor. He's being foolish. Now, when you say he's being, you're saying that to criticize what someone is doing. He's being foolish. That means he's not usually like that. It's like you're saying he's not usually like that. But for this instance, he's being foolish, he's being selfish, he's being uh, generous, he's being whatever. Well, if you say about somebody that he's being generous, that means he's not usually generous. There is something different about this time. I I'm not trying to be suspicious or anything, but this is not the usual case. Because if it is the usual case, you just say he is generous, period. 
But if you say he is being generous, or like in our example here, he is being foolish, that means he is not always like that. But this time, for some reason, I don't know why he is behaving in this way. I'm talking about a temporary behavior. But here you will have to be careful. We don't use it with every single adjective. We use it with adjectives you have control over. If you have no control over the adjective, if something just happens to you, you don't use this form. You cannot say, for example, Mary is being tired. She's either tired or she's not. It's not she's being tired or being sick. No, faking is another thing. If you're faking being tired or something like that, that's a different story. But I'm talking about the adjective itself. We're talking about foolish, generous, selfish, things that you can decide to be or not to be. And again, using am is are being with this adjective, that means the behavior is temporary and this person is not usually foolish. But right now, he's acting that way. So that is about state of verbs and how some state of verbs can be used both in non-progressive and progressive ways. And now, if you're on the website, let's do some exercises to cement this new knowledge and make sure we understood everything that I said in this episode. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Unlock the marvels of mycology and take a journey of deep discovery into the divine. Lordofspore.com has 21 unique varieties of magic mushroom spores that will open doors you never knew existed. From the shamanic rituals of 10,000-year-old tribes, to Plato, Socrates, the Dionysian mysteries, and even early Christianity, entheogens have been the key to unlocking the secrets of the infinite realm that we are all part of, offering us mere mortals a glimpse into the sacred meaning of everything we see, and everything we don't. Join us on our journey. It starts with a few microscopic mushroom spores, and it grows into a network across time and space, connecting us all to infinity and beyond. Well, I hope you got all the answers correctly, but if you didn't, or if you still want to make sure that you did them while you understand why you made this choice, let's do it together. Now, the first one, the first exercise, this isn't my book. It belongs or it is belonging to me. Well, here, obviously, it belongs because there is nothing continuous about that. She owns it. She has it. That is a state. So we use present simple. The second one, ask Ahmed for your book. He has it or he is having it. Well, he is having it would be very weird. That means he's eating the book. It has no other meaning. So obviously, he has it. We're talking about who has the book. Not owns here, but who has it right now. But definitely not is having, even if it is a temporary thing. Yes, Ahmad doesn't own the book. And we might be tempted to say is having, but definitely don't use that because that means he's eating the book. And I'm pretty sure that's not what you want to say. Now, number three, your book is over there. Ahmad holds it or is holding it. Well, here, of course, hold is an action verb. So he is holding it at the moment because I'm talking about your book is over there. Like right now, look, Ahmad is holding it. Here we can say is holding or present progressive. Number four, Olga is smiling. She a good time. And we talked about has here, whether she has a good time or she's having a good time. No, Olga is smiling like right now. She's having, she's spending. That is an action. And the meaning is progressive. I'm talking about the moment of speaking. So she is having a good time. Number five, relax. Everything is okay. I believe you or I am believing you. Well, here, the thing is, even I'm talking about at the moment and right now and everything, but believe here has a stative meaning, is a stative verb. So we don't use it in progressive. I either believe you or I don't believe you. There is no process. There is no progress. So it is not progressive. Okay, I believe you. That's the correct answer. And number six, the final one, my computer says my file no longer exists or is existing. Well, obviously, exists. Not is existing because exists on its own is a state of verb. And it has no progressive meaning like that. You either exist or you don't exist. Like when we talk about some species or maybe human beings, we exist. Yes, who knows? Maybe in the future we'll go extinct, so we won't exist anymore. Not to paint this dark picture, but I'm just saying exist is a state. You either exist or you don't exist. And here, the same goes for my file that no longer exists. So I hope this explanation made this exercise easier and you understood the concept of state of verbs even better. Now, 
I hope you got all the answers correctly, but in case you didn't, I'm here to help. In this exercise, I wanted you to put all the knowledge you have so far together and start to differentiate between simple present and present progressive in many different cases. So let's start with number one. Look, it begin to rain. So what should we say? It begins to rain or it is beginning to rain. Well, obviously, it is beginning because the clue here is I'm not telling you about it begins to rain every time this year. No, it's not about talking about things that happen in general. I'm just telling you, look, like look outside the window. It is beginning. It is starting to rain. So it is happening like right now. Unfortunately, I have not an umbrella with me. What should we say here? Well, yes, we're talking about something that's happening right now, but don't forget, have here is a state of verb, so I don't have an umbrella with me. I own not an umbrella, that's also stative. I don't own an umbrella. Spiro is lucky. Why is he lucky? Because it's raining right now and he's wearing a raincoat. He's wearing a raincoat. If I say he wears a raincoat, well, first of all, it's weird if somebody wears a raincoat all the time, right? But here we should use the present continuous because that's why Spiro is lucky. He's wearing a raincoat, like right now, because it's raining. And here I wear a waterproof hat on rainy days. Here, yes, you can say I'm wearing if I'm talking about at the moment, but you should continue the sentence and understand the whole thing. I'm not talking about what I'm wearing right now. I'm talking about what I wear on rainy days. I wear a waterproof hat on rainy days. So that is simple present. Now let's move to number two. Martha is in science class. The chemistry experiment she is doing is dangerous. I mean, right now. She is doing an experiment and this experiment is dangerous. So right now, she is being very careful. Well, here I have to say that she is very careful, can be used, but it doesn't give the meaning completely. Now here, she's being very careful doesn't mean that she's usually not careful. But because that is a very specific case, now the experiment is going on. So maybe I'm saying she's extra careful. She's being extra careful. The chemistry experiment she's doing is dangerous. So right now she's being very careful. And then we continue and say she want not to spill any of the chemical. Well, maybe it is continuous and it is happening at the moment. And right now she is not wanting. It doesn't make any sense because want is a state of verb. She doesn't want to spill any of the chemical. She be always careful when she does a chemistry experiment. Now, this one is in general. So she is always. She is always careful. We don't have to say she is being careful. No, no. Here it's in general, I'm talking about what she does in general. So you can see within the same sentence, of course, we can mix the present simple and the present continuous and use them together. And that is exactly how we use it in real conversations and real life. We use them together all the time. You have to be flexible and switch quickly from continuous to simple, simple continuous, even if you're talking about something that is happening at the moment of speaking. Now let's move to number three. Right now, I look at Nicole. So right now, what am I doing right now? I am looking. Obviously, this is very simple because I'm talking about something that's happening at the moment of speaking. She is looking angry. Well, I'm not talking about she's looking at something. She's looking at something that is an action. Sure. But when I say she looks angry, I'm talking about I'm describing her state. I looked at her. I saw her face red. I saw that she was kind of maybe trembling, maybe even muttering some words. So she looks from her looks. I can tell that she is angry. She looks. That's a state of her. I wonder what's the matter. She have a frown on her face. Well, obviously here, I'm just saying what she has on her face. So this should be present simple, stative. She has a frown, not she is having. She's having, there's no action here. I'm just saying what she has on her face, a state here. Have is used in a state of meaning. She certainly any fun right now, have not any fun right now. She certainly isn't having. And here we talked about using have, especially with fun. Well, of course you can be having fun or not. So here she certainly isn't having any fun right now. And for our last exercise, number four, how do you like the soup? Now here, I'm just asking about your opinion, whether you like the soup or you don't. So it's a state. And I'm even asking more about, does it need more garlic? Does it need, because need here is again a state. It either needs more garlic or it doesn't need more garlic. And here the answer came, no, it tastes delicious. It tastes, that's the state of the soup. I'm not 
talking about that I am, oh, just one minute, I'm tasting it right now. And after I finish tasting the soup, I will tell you what I think. No, no, I, I tasted the soup. It's over. And now I'm telling you about the state of the soup. It tastes delicious. It reminds me of my mom's soup. And again, remind here is a state of verb. So I hope the explanation helped you understand the difference between the present simple and the present progressive even better. So that was everything for today's episode. Don't forget, what you heard in this episode is half what you're going to get on the website. On the website, there's a lot more to do and more explanations as well, even audio explanations. So take the link, go to the website and practice what you've learned here to make sure that you cement the information in your mind. You can use this information anytime you want. And don't forget, I'm counting on your support. So there is another link in the description that will take you to my Patreon page. Go to my Patreon page, see for yourselves the benefits you get if you become patrons. But the biggest benefit of all is supporting our learning community, supporting me to continue creating content, creating quality content that is available for everyone in this community. And you have some perks, of course. Like I said at the beginning of this episode, now this episode, or actually the rich post that I have on my website, is going to be available for free, publicly, only for one week. After that week, it's available only to my patrons. So, if you become a patron, all the premium content will be available to you at all times. So that is a perk you might think about and become my patron because of that. But I hope you decide to become a patron to support our learning community. That's the highest goal I have in mind. With that being said, this is your host, Danny. I would like to thank you very much for listening to another episode from English Plus Podcast. I will see you next time.